So uh, this topic is about the assignment grading interface. So this was a new interface that we added for Moodle 3.1. Um, the whole goal when we uh, did this new interface was about trying to make it easier and less clicks for teachers when they're marking a long list of students um, and also giving them one single interface where they could see all of the information uh, when they're doing the grading um, as opposed to like a, a little row of um, just summary information in a table. So when they're, uh, the, the reasoning behind that is when they're making the decisions about the grade, um, you really want to be showing them, they want to be seeing the submission, they want to be seeing all the comments and all the feedback and not have anything hidden away just because of the, the complexities of a table or um, a lot of the, the way that the old assignment was laid out. So... So when we started, um, we were working off uh, some designs which were sent to us from Flinders University. So we were working with them. Um, they were initially uh, thinking about sponsoring this development because they really wanted it internally. Assignments are really important to Flinders University. They um, switched a, a few years ago, so they have a requirement across the university that all their assessments be uh, submitted digitally. So. Um, Quite a few years ago, I worked with them in writing the, the rewrite of assignment for assignment 2.3. Um, this was uh, quite a few years ago. Uh, but, and they've still been involved and, and, and were helping us with this specification. Um, so it was really good to get, see their thoughts and get their feedback. Uh, and this was the, just the initial mock-up that we came. So the final one doesn't look quite like this, but it does look pretty close. So as we test things, we change things as we develop them. So first, um, it's a good idea just to see how the workflow for the assignment works currently. This is what everybody will be uh, familiar with when they're grading assignments in uh, all the versions before 3.1. So you come in and you have this um, grading summary, which tells you uh, how many participants there are, um, how many have submitted and how many need grading. Uh, but then if, the, if I'm a teacher and I'm coming in and I want to, to grade, um, the only option I have is then to go to the View Grade All Submissions page, which is a big table listing all of the students in the course. Um, and then you just get this very brief summary information, whether they have a grade, whether they have submitted. Um, and if they have submitted text, you'll see a very shortened version of that text, but you can't see all the information from here. Um, so then you have to have a second click where you click on this tiny little icon um, to get to actually grade a student and see all of the information. And then this page where you're grading a student looks like this, which is a very long list of metadata about the, the submission. Um, again, if they have a lot of text submitted, uh, you have to expand it out to be able to see all the text. If they're using a, a rubric, um, again, you just have to keep scrolling down. This is all in one page. Uh, I'm scrolling down here, but... Uh, it's not mine. <laughs> The answer. <laughs> so, uh, so we're still scrolling down. This is still the old assignment, even though we were distracted. But we're still going, and then we finally get to the bottom. And if I had made any changes uh, above this point in the page, I would still have to go all the way to the bottom. Uh, to save my changes on this page. So just the, that one long page with a, a long listing of form elements and, and complexity is, is not very usable uh, for teachers. What I also can't see is any kind of information about where I'm up to. So how many more uh, 
assignments have I got a mark? Am I halfway through? Um, maybe I only want to see the assignments that have uh, that actually need grading, and I don't want to, to keep seeing the ones that I've already graded. All of this stuff we can't actually do with the old interface. So in the new assignment, um, we still have the button to go to view all submissions, which goes to the same place as the old one uh, did. Um, if we go to the uh, that old the grading table, um, uh, it still looks pretty similar, uh, but we made obviously the grade button really much more obvious, so it's easier to find and click on if you want to go in that way, and that will take you directly to grade a student. Uh, the other thing that um, we're pointing out here is um, a lot of people use that, the edit PDF feature or annotate PDF where you can mark up over a, a submission. That uh, previously only worked if the students were submitting PDF files, but there's now a process that will run on the server that will try and convert Word documents and other um, Office document formats to PDF automatically, so students can submit in a range of different formats and that will happen in the background. Um, there is some server work involved for server admins to uh, set that up, uh, but they can, they can read through the, the release notes and find out how to do that. Uh, so we, back on the first page, if we had just wanted to start grading straight away, we could have just hit this big button on the front page and skip that grading table uh, completely. And then uh, we get to the, the new interface, which, uh, like I said, we, we tried to design it around <coughs> making it fast to load, fast to um, do the common things that we want to do. And this is uh, roughly what the new one looks like. So um, coming from the top, uh, we have the information about the course. We can jump to the uh, assignment settings using that little settings icon. We can see all the information about who I'm grading right at the top, so it's obvious. Um, and then uh, on the top right, we have a user uh, selector. So if I start typing a student's name in there, it will auto-complete. Um, based on more than just their first and last name, but any of their user fields. So I can quickly find a specific user. Uh, there's also a filter uh, icon there. If I click that, I can change the, uh, apply some filters to the list of users that I'm stepping through. So I might want to only see uh, submissions that need grading or students that have submitted something. Uh, and that way I can quickly step through only those uh, users. Then the, most of the page is filled up with these two panels. So we have the actual annotation interface, um, which is the same as the old one, but it comes up straight away now. Uh, and because we support more document types, um, a lot of the time that will come straight up with their submission, even though it's a Word document. We made that uh, editing interface work better on things like tablets. So before it was very hard to scroll around if the, the page was large or um, or if I was on a small tablet. So now there's a specific tool just for scrolling. So if I'm on a touch screen, I can use this hand icon and then scroll around in my um, PDF and, and be able to see all the content. And then all of the, the actual form that was in the old interface is in this left hand, uh, right hand grading panel. So if I was using special plugins for my assignment um, and they were showing additional things in that uh, grading form, They'll still show up in this new interface, but they'll be uh, down the right-hand side in that panel. Um, and it's done in a backwards compatible way, so even if the plugin that you're using uh, hasn't been updated for 3.1, it should still work uh, nicely with this new interface. So this is uh, showing you how you can uh, easily select uh, from a long list of users. This will work quickly even if you've got a thousand users in the course or 10,000 users. Um, uh, it's quite efficient. It doesn't fetch more information than it needs to. Um, so it feels quite snappy. Uh, the other thing that we can do, because that right-hand panel is quite uh, narrow, 
we can pop out sections of the panel and make them bigger and put them in the middle of the page. So um, this is showing you uh, uh, a rubric. Uh, but, so it works for rubrics, marking guides, um, and also uh, uploading files and, and those advanced things. So we can just pop that out and put it back as we need to while we're grading. Um, it works for uh, giving us more room to type our, our feedback comments as well. We can do that. Um, the Looking down at the footer now, what we can see is that we will always see those uh, save changes buttons without having to scroll when we come in here. So as soon as we've made some changes, we can save them straight away without having to scroll to the bottom of the page. The other interesting thing that wasn't in the first release of 3.1, um, but we, we added because we got a lot of feedback, is uh, being, people wanted more control over this layout. So you don't always have a document that you want to put annotations on. Um, in which case you might want to just show the, the right-hand panel and not show the left-hand panel. Um, or you might not be using the right-hand panel for much, so you want more room to do your annotations. So uh, this uh, little three buttons down the bottom gives us three layout options that we can use to rearrange this uh, grading interface as we need to. So we can get rid of the annotations. Um, and we can just have more room for putting in our comments and giving our grades. Or we can go the other way and have full width for the, for the annotations. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there any questions? Yes. Yep. It, uh, you can get rid of things if you've uh, made a mistake. You, there's a little arrow icon that lets you select things and move them around. Once you've selected something, um, there's a little trash can icon that comes up on it, and that's how you delete. So you have to click, select it, and then delete. Yes? Um, it has been suggested, and it's a, a good idea. I know there's some similar things in other tools. Um, we, uh, one thing that we do is we have these uh, weeks at Moodle where we have a project week, uh, where all the Moodle developers are free to kind of work on different things that they, they want to, uh, that they think might be useful. And because it's kind of, there's no scope to what they can work on, then we get more um, interesting ideas and, and improvements. One of the things that one of our developers has been working on was a um, native HTML5 audio recording uh, repository, so you could easily just record things straight in the browser using HTML5. Um, and that might be something that we use in future to, to add that kind of uh, capability. Yes? Sorry, thanks. If you've got a very long course name, or a very long, like we had one with 101 characters, uh, or a very long um, activity name, the annotation part panel covers yes. over the text, hides some of the text, like you can't see the Dubai date, if you've got a Dubai date up there as well. Um, okay, well that's good feedback for us. Uh, I'll make a tracker issue for it, and that'll be something we can easily put a maximum length on the how many characters we display out there? Because, sorry, it's just for auditing purposes that the, the um, tapes <laughs> need to have the actual whole name there. So if the text was smaller and yes. it fitted, that would be perfect. Yeah, um, yeah. Or I'll make a tracker issue and we'll, we'll work through it and try and come up with something that works well. Maybe one more. Um, yes, one more. Yes, the so grading history, um, because right now the, the previous grade for us is getting deleted for some reason, so uh, it maintains a record of the previous his, uh, grading history. Yeah, so it still works with attempts like the old one used to. 
um, where you can allow the student another attempt and that will create a new record for the submission and the feedback. Um, and when you're doing that, it shows at the bottom right hand, uh, in, that, in the right hand panel at the very bottom, uh, you can choose from previous attempts and then that will update all the panels to be showing you the previous one. Um, I think I did see a bug reported that the annotations was, were not showing the older version um, when you do that, so uh, we'll be fixing that as soon as we can. Um, but the feature is still there and the functionality will work, will work soon. Thank you.